All right. So we are in recording mode. So again, I'm going to uh, share my screen. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. So this AEA summer program is taking place at Howard University in Washington, DC. Uh, just a um, few uh, notes here about some of its hosts and collaborators, right? So one of the uh, main supporters is the Women's Institute for Science, Equity, and Race. Also, of course, Howard University is a, a main supporter of this program as well, as is the American Economic Association. Uh, the National Economic uh, Association is also a, a big supporter of this, as is the American Society of Hispanic Economists and the Association for Economic Research of Indigenous Peoples. Um, the AA Summer Program, just to give you, give you some background information, started in the uh, late 1970s and since then is at over 750 alumni. It is a two-level program, so there's what's called a foundation level. And this is for people who are kind of undergraduates looking to go to graduate school, uh, particularly maybe seeking a PhD in economics. And then the advanced level is for people who are either enrolled in or have completed a master's program and are looking to kind of uh, pursue further education as a PhD in economics. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, you can go right from undergrad into a PhD program in economics. You do not have to get a master's degree first. Uh, that's how I did it. So I went right from undergrad into the PhD program and then kind of picked up a master's along the way as part of that PhD program. And so you will have, uh, so you do have that option, right? Which is kind of nice because you can get a PhD in less time than those play, uh, disciplines that do make you get a uh, master's before you get your PhD. Uh, so with that in mind, again, the foundation program is for those uh, kind of rising juniors and seniors who are maybe looking for uh, to get a PhD in economics. And the advances for people who already have their undergraduate degree and maybe have either started a master's program or uh, maybe even have completed a master's program, right? Those, uh, that's kind of um, more where the, uh, the advanced level is. And they will sort you into the foundation or advanced level uh, uh, for you. So you won't necessarily have to guess uh, where you are. Uh, and again, if you are just a freshman or sophomore, uh, this is definitely a great thing uh, to come to this presentation because it at least gives you a plan for the future as kind of what you are working towards. Uh, just so you know, the program will run eight weeks. Students will take uh, four classes, attend seminars, and have field trips over this eight-week program. Uh, so you can kind of think of this as kind of like a, uh, an eight-week economics boot camp to prepare you for graduate school is maybe a good way to uh, look at it. Um, as far as the program eligibility, the actual AEA summer program is open to all qualified applicants regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, or country of origin. Right, uh, here are, there are some minimum requirements. So when we talk about qualified applicants, you're gonna need, need at least two years of undergraduate study, right? So again, this is kind of for rising juniors and seniors. Uh, again, but if you are a freshman right now, it's never too early to uh, start uh, thinking about this stuff. Uh, you will have to have completed intermediate microeconomics or macroeconomics, uh, because that is kind of the baseline at which they're gonna be starting you for these classes. And then you would uh, need a, a semester of statistics and or econometrics, as well as a semester of calculus, right? So that's kind of, again, the level of material they expect you to have as you are coming into this program. Um, now, that is the um, uh, program eligibility here. Now, there are uh, scholarships available. And uh, to be uh, qualified for that scholarship, you just uh, it's open to all qualified US citizens and permanent residents. Uh, members of uh, racial and ethnic minorities historic, uh, historically disadvantaged in the U.S. context is who these scholarships are uh, kind of uh, meant to go to. Uh, by the way, uh, if you are a uh, uh, DACA uh, or Dreamer, then uh, you are, uh, again, I think, qualified as a permanent resident for the scholarship. So just keep that in mind. Uh, preference uh, is given to those who, by their background, life experiences, and scholarship can show that they will bring greater diversity to the field and who also demonstrate a financial need. Right, so this program can be expensive without the scholarship, but these scholarships are designed to, again, help uh, qualified applicants uh, get access to the program. Uh, so again, we've talked about this already, but the foundations level, you're gonna need a semester of statistics and or econometrics, as well as calculus, and then intermediate microeconomics and macroeconomics. The advanced level, they're gonna want you to have at least three semesters of calculus or higher mathematics, and you are encouraged to uh, take um, two semesters of calculus, linear algebra, differential equations, and real analysis prior to applying, right? So again, these are people who are probably towards the end of their uh, uh, undergraduate education, and even people who may have already completed that undergraduate degree and are thinking about graduate school. 
as far as the program cost, uh, tuition, room and board, fees, books, and everything comes out to about $16,000, which I know is a pretty hefty price tag. But remember, there's those scholarships available, and there is quite a few of them. Um, so there's the NSF scholarships and the AEA minority scholarships uh, that are both need and merit-based. Um, the full awards will cover the entire um, uh, program fees as well as travel and provide you with a small living stipend. Um, again, international students are not eligible for the scholarship money unless in the DACA program. If you're in the DACA, DACA program, then you can get access to uh, this uh, financial aid here, right? But let's talk a little bit more about the program. So there's three components here. Uh, one is you will be partnered with the uh, Federal Reserve Board, particularly those who are in the advanced category will be working directly with Federal Reserve uh, uh, employees and members. Um, there's going to be uh, experimental, uh, experiential learning and mentoring pods, and we'll talk about those here in a second. But to give you an idea of what the course schedule looks like, uh, the foundational track is going to be taking a foundations of microeconomics, which is I would uh, describe that as kind of the bridge between intermediate microeconomics and advanced microeconomics that you're going to take in graduate school. Um, you also take advanced mathematical methods, advanced econometrics, uh, sorry, uh, foundations of mathematical math methods, foundations of econometrics, and then the foundation, foundations of research methods and statistical program uh, programming. This is like a computer programming class where you're going to learn basics of like uh, Stata uh, and uh, other uh, programming methods, right? Uh, the advanced track uh, class is all that same stuff on a more advanced level. So advanced microeconomics, advanced mathematical methods, advanced econometrics, and advanced research methods and statistical programming. And I'm just going to give you like a quick shout out as to why this program exists. More so than uh, other academic disciplines, there is a big gap between graduate level economics and undergraduate level economics, particularly in the mathematical and computer programming requirements. Uh, so with that in mind, a lot of undergraduates who go into a like PhD level economics program, they struggle at least in that first year because they're not used to that heavy emphasis on math, uh, mathematical theory, and uh, computer programming, right? And so for that reason, a lot of uh, uh, economic PhD programs have a higher attrition rate than other kind of uh, uh, graduate programs in other disciplines. I know that for me, I only had calculus one and two in a math econ class coming into grad school. And it definitely wasn't enough. Like I struggled really hard that first year of uh, grad school. Uh, there were uh, several times when I really thought about quitting. I uh, remember I went to my academic advisor and I was like, you know, I was led to believe that there was gonna be some economics in this economics PhD program. It's all math and I don't like it. And he's like, just stick it out, get through the math theory the first uh, year and a half. And then after that, you get to focus more on what you want to do. And he was right. Uh, I did stick it out, and I'm glad I did. But it is a pretty big jump in terms of what you're expected to know, right? So this is kind of uh, designed to help bridge that gap and make uh, that transition into graduate school, particularly a PhD program, a lot uh, easier for you. Right. Now, I did mention, and I'm sure uh, Precious is going to comment on this, that it can be a fairly intense program. Right, so again, you're gonna be in these uh, math and uh, uh, theory classes from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday. You get a two hour break for lunch where you can eat and maybe uh, um, network a little bit or explore Washington, D.C. Uh, and then from one to three, you're gonna be taking those uh, uh, statistic level classes, so math and econometrics, as well as uh, more research methods. And you'll also be meeting uh, on Tuesdays with a mentor uh, for the program. I've uh, just recently volunteered to be a mentor for the program. So these are going to be faculty from all across the uh, country there who are going to uh, uh, kind of make themselves available to answer questions uh, for you about research, about teaching, about uh, graduate studies, things like that, right? And then uh, from three to four, you have what's called kind of a brown bag, which is like a, a working uh, lunch or early dinner where you're going to be uh, uh, bringing your own research ideas and talking about them with your fellow co colleagues. Right, there's a seminar on Wednesdays, and then you're gonna have, again, some more micro and research on Thursdays and Fridays. But I think one of the maybe the uh, most uh, interesting parts about this program, or maybe one of the more useful ones, is that, again, the advanced tier students are gonna be paired with uh, uh, members of the uh, Federal Reserve Board. And again, you'll be uh, actually completing research projects with these Federal Reserve members. And depending on your level of uh, experience with that research project, you know, you could just be learning how to put together a data set, or you could actually be part of the research design team 
who knows, you might even get your name on a publication as part of uh, working with uh, some of these individuals. Right. And then if, uh, as far as the uh, foundational uh, students are concerned, they're gonna be placed with members of think tanks and national government organizations and government agencies to get, get research experience. Um, and again, students will be paid by the program. And again, you're gonna get exposure to what economists do outside of academia. So for somebody who's thinking about doing research or going to uh, 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 graduate school, but isn't really sure that they wanna become a professor, right? This is where that experiential learning is going to be uh, pretty useful for you. You kind of gonna get to see what the day-to-day -day life is like uh, outside of academia. All right, um, here are some of the learning partners that you're gonna get to work with. Right, so again, there's the Center of Budget and Policy Priorities, uh, uh, Compass uh, Lexicon, uh, Congressional Research Service, uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, uh, Cornerstone Research, Equitable Growth, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Those are, the, uh, again, the uh, uh, part of the Federal Reserve that kind of backs up your deposits at the bank. Uh, there's the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the U.S. Department of Treasury, and the Women's Institute for Science, Equity, and Race. Um, Again, there's going to be inclusive peer, on-site, and distance mentoring. Uh, these will uh, fill the gap in uh, mentoring not covered by the program itself. Again, students are going to be paired with a mentor that are going to be volunteers from faculty and other research members across the country. Uh, it is, at this point, still kind of undecided as to what the program is going to look like this year, whether it's going to be uh, on-site or maybe online. Uh, but they are optimistic about hopefully offering it uh, on site this summer, but we'll see uh, see how things go, right? You never know in this kind of uh, climate what's going to happen, right? So that's it. If you have any questions, here is the email that you should contact. Again, these slides are going to be available, and this recording is going to be available. But that's just a quick overview of the program. I myself haven't participated in the program. I wish I did before going into grad school. Uh, so I can't tell you the kind of in-depth experience that Precious is now going to talk to you about. So I'm going to kind of leave it up to her to tell you about her kind of day-to-day -day experience within the program and what she got out of it. And then uh, after that, we're going to be happy to take any questions that you may have. Right. So with that in mind, Precious, I'm going to let you uh, take it away here. You can go ahead. Cool. Thank you so much, Dr. Corey. Um, those of you who are here, the small group that we have here, you are super duper lucky to have. Dr. Corey here just emphasizing how critical this program is. When I was applying, I was so nervous because I knew that some of the students there, the people historically who have attended them, they go on to really be leaders and pillars within our field. Um, I think it's really important to know, and I actually had a little presentation prepared, but I thought that Dr. Corey really went into good detail about what this program is really about, but I had multiple mentors when I was enrolled this past summer. I was a little bit dismayed because, of course, it was online because of COVID, but these professors, these graduate students, these mentors all came together to really offer a such, like, such a critical and expansive program. One of my mentors actually is serving on the president-elect's transition team. Another one of my mentors, and anybody who was in um, my last class for econ last night already heard this. Another one of my mentors, um, Jeff Woodridge, Woodridge, actually wrote the econometrics book that we use for every class across the country, around the world, those data sets. He is the one. So you're really getting all of this information straight from the people who have been working for decades doing it. And it's so invaluable. And these truly become your mentors. So um, it was all online, of course. So I was in my apartment, my bedroom doing this work. So it was a lot different from what you all may experience in applying this summer. But I think that I experienced so much um, support and I can only imagine what it would look like when you're going to be on campus potentially. But even if this program is on Zoom or online, I really, really encourage you all to apply. Um, in terms of costs, I don't know any students that, was pay that were paying for it. I remember a lot of people were scared. Am I gonna have to pay $16,000? Um, the AA program is really well-funded by a lot of people who support you and people who look like us being in this field. So I didn't know anybody who was paying for the program right off the bat, I do wanna share that. And there's so much support. I do know a couple of students said, I don't have a laptop that's working. I don't have headphones. My house is so noisy. And they're so supportive. They give you the materials that you need from top to bottom. And it is intensive. Um, I thought, I was thinking, if I like this program, I'm gonna keep going with economics. If I don't, I'm free. I'm not doing it anymore. I decided I won't keep going with it. And I worked my butt off. 
if it's appropriate to say. I really, really worked hard. And I was just thinking I was surrounded by students from Columbia, students from Yale, students from Harvard, students from Berkeley. And I was thinking, and I was thinking that they were thinking of me from UCI. And I'm sure that so many of you have heard this. Um, we don't get the best reputation as a school, but our school is amazing. And it was proven because I could keep up. And I was in the advanced track with people who already had their master's degrees, people who were in their 30s. And not to say that if you're in your 30s, you're old, but they were grown. And I was thinking, I don't belong here. How can I keep up? But I did. And I was the valedictorian of the program. And I was shocked myself. I was like, what? How am I the valedictorian in this program? And I was just thinking, there's so many brilliant, brilliant people at UCR, all of you here. The fact that you're here shows that you're already thinking about how far you want to go. And that's such a positive step in the correct direction. So I want to see more names with UCR next to them at this program and leading in this field for decades and years to come. So I'm really happy that you all are here. And again, it was a really transformative like program. And now I have these mentors, these collaborators. The person who I wrote my paper with actually is still my really good friend. We still work together. We still write together. And we keep talking about, oh, we're going to be writing together in 20 years because we have similar interests. So this is really such a powerful place to network. It's people who are like you in the sense of they understand what it is to be in these spaces and not feel comfortable, not feel like you may belong in the beginning. And you can support each other and gain the critical resources needed to succeed through this program. And now, now this is my last year at UCR, I'm taking math classes for fun. I remember my advisor was like, you need a minor in math if you really wanna keep going with econ. And I was just thinking, nah, I'm a minor in anthropology because I love anthropology as well. And now I'm just taking math for fun because I learned how fun it could be. And I just want you all to potentially think about applying for this program. The fact that you're here again is a huge signal to the fact that you have the potential to succeed greatly in the program and in economics. So I will stop rambling about how much I love this program and I will pass it back to Dr. Corey and to all of you for questions. But again, thank you so much for being here and I'm really excited for the potential of you all applying this spring and getting in there this summer. All right. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your experience. Um, I, would, I want everybody to know that I also used that uh, Woolridge book when I was uh, going through my graduate program. So he, yeah, they've been doing it for years. Um, and again, as far as uh, if you're really interested in a career in economics, I can't emphasize enough how valuable a program like this would be, not only in terms of what you learn, and again, kind of bridging that gap between undergrad and graduate school, but in terms of the connections you make, I mean, again, I, I'm, I'm jealous of anybody who gets to do this program because uh, I just wish it was something that I had done before I went to graduate school. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to open up to uh, questions from everybody. You can uh, either unmute your mic and ask the question, or if you feel more comfortable, you can type it out in the chat. Uh, either way, uh, I'll be happy to answer it. Or if it's a question for Precious about her experience, then uh, I'm sure she'll be happy to answer it as well. So then any questions about the program, the scholarship or anything like that? Yeah, hello, I have a question. Yeah, sure, go for it, Or. Um, so does the program require that you uh, have to take it between the summers of your uh, undergraduate and then your graduate career? Or is this something that you can pick up like say after you've graduated um, uh, and then uh, in a couple of years, you just decide to go back to graduate school and you can apply for this program right before you do. Right, so you can, um, you can take this program again between, you have to, the only requirement is that you have to have at least two years of undergraduate um, education under your belt. So again, you can take it between say your sophomore and junior year, between your junior and senior year, or after your senior year before graduate school. And if you are, uh, say take it and then you want to delay graduate school by a year because you might want to, maybe you get a job offer or you want to work or, uh, for a little while first, then I, I, you know, I'm pretty sure that's okay too. I do know that they kind of are hoping that people will go on to become uh, kind of uh, graduate students in economics. The idea behind this program in general is to get uh, uh, more people from traditionally underrepresented groups in economics to become uh, economists 
uh, professionally, either within academia or outside of it. Uh, Precious, did you want to go ahead and speak a little bit more on when when you can take this program and when you can't? Yeah, definitely. I think that the best time to take this program is when you're really in the space of critically thinking about how you want to pursue economics in the future. There was a couple of students who just finished their sophomore year in their undergraduate. They were people who were finishing up their master's thesis. So there's, and there was so much of us in between. So it's really about wanting the tools, the training to succeed in a PhD program. I am, did not apply this fall for a PhD. I did not apply for graduate school because I want to have a year of doing an RA ship, doing a pre-doctoral fellowship, and I want to get a little bit more experience before jumping in. But having that program really informs my decision making. And I think that as soon as you're starting to think critically about how you want to pursue um, economics past your undergraduate degree, that is a good time to enroll in this program. And there are people who enroll twice. Some people who first were in foundations and come back one or two or three years later and do the advanced track. So you're always welcome and invited back, um, especially if you were not an advanced student initially. So that is also another option. And there was another question in the chat if you want to look at that. Right. Before you. So how soon does the scholarship process begin for the next summer? Um, so I believe the deadline for the scholarship application for this coming summer is at the end of January. So um, that's where the deadline is to uh, apply. So you need to have uh, your application for the scholarship in by then. And then I'm not sure how uh, long it takes them to sift through it and um, actually declare who gets the scholarship and who doesn't. Uh, Precious, do you have an idea of uh, about when you found out that you got that scholarship? Yeah, so the scholarship and the program application are one. So definitely the application is due by January 31st. And I think I found out in March and they tell you everything. Oh, like this is how much we're going to support you. We're also going to fly you out at the time. COVID wasn't at its height as it is now. So they were saying, oh, please send your information for your um, airport that's closest to you so we can fly you out on the day needed, et cetera, et cetera. So that day that you hear whether or not you get into the program, you will begin to get the information about funding, finances. But again, please, please, please don't worry about that or let that deter your decision making because they do financially support all the students who they want there. So I've never heard a peep from any student saying, I don't have this support, this is too expensive, I'm stressed out about how I can pay for this and continue this. They definitely do support you financially through this program. Precious, did you wanna, uh, would you mind talking a little bit about the application process, what all you need to do in order to submit your application? Yeah, of course. So you do have a transcript requirement, you have a personal statement, and you have, I believe, two letters of recommendation. So I had our department chair, Dr. Helfen, and one of my faculty mentors, Dr. Joseph Cummins, write my um, letters of recommendation. And of course, when you're doing that, you do want to ask them very, very much so ahead of time. So even right now, just speaking to someone and saying, I'm interested in applying for this. I would love to have your help and support. The deadline is et cetera, et cetera. Um, I would love to be a competitive applicant for this. And this is why I'm interested in it. This would be a great time to do that, just to have it in these professors' minds and you're not springing it on them two weeks before the deadline. So um, I think the recommendation letters are a really important part of your application. And the transcripts are basically more so, they're looking to see what you've taken so far. So don't worry thinking, I have a C, I have a D, whatever. They want to see that you've taken these courses where you're at. And again, for the placement in advanced or foundations, there's a placement exam. So it's not just what classes you've taken, but it's also how well you grasp these concepts. So you'll be filtered into the place where you really, really can learn the best. So that application is due by the end of January. So right now is a really great time to start outlining what you might want to bring forth in your personal statement, why you want to study economics, which is a great question to ask yourself. And I think that this program helps you to think, why do I want to be in this field? What do I have to contribute? What do I want to see be different in 20, 30 years? And how can I be added to that process? So, yeah. Yeah, and I will uh, emphasize uh, what she was saying about definitely ask your professors well in advance for letters of recommendation. I give them time to write them. Uh, somebody who teaches, you know, over a thousand students every quarter, I get a lot of requests for letters of re recommendation. And some of them ask uh, for like letters like two or three days in advance. 
like it's Wednesday and I need it by Friday. And I was like, I can write you one, but it's not going to be that detailed because I don't have that much time. So yeah, the more time you give the professor, the more that, that time you give them to kind of be able to write you a strong letter of recommendation and put a lot of time and effort into it. So definitely start thinking about uh, who you want to ask and uh, get those requests out uh, shortly uh, so that uh, you can give them plenty of time to uh, start working. Any other uh, any other questions about the program or anything? Uh, how competitive is the uh, placement? Is it based on your past curriculum? Is it based on your GPA? So it's my understanding that the placement is based on your performance on the placement exam. Uh, that's probably what they're going to look at most. Uh, Precious, did you want to elaborate on that? Yes, so the placement exam is really, really important to your placement. Of course, if they see that you've only taken one calculus course, they're going to say, well, this person probably should not be in advanced calculus just because we want to see them succeed and learn at the level that's most appropriate for them. But um, the placement exam is really important. And I do want to note that on the website, it talks about people who are coming from quarter systems, which is we are. And I was in a little bit of a tough spot because I was finishing up weeks, I think, nine, 10 and finals week when the program started. So I was pretty much taking, I think, eight classes at once. And it was insane. So if I had been in person, I would have just I actually reached out to my professors at the beginning of the quarter and I said, hey, I have this summer program. This is pre-COVID and I'm going to be leaving early. I was wondering if I could take my final exams in week eight or week nine. And they said, of course, congratulations. That's great. And then the program ends up being online. So I was double enrolled. So I do want you all to have that in mind, communicate with your professors, figure out what would work best for you. And with placement, the placement exam is gonna be about week seven or six, and it's a two hour long exam. So it goes into econometrics and it asks you some basic micro slash macro questions. So again, that 104A, B class is really important. I realized I was like, I should pay attention a little bit better. Those classes are super important for the placement exam and for placement in general. But I think the exam is most important. So don't worry too much about your GPA, just approach that exam as you would any other. All right. And again, I, I want to emphasize to those of you who, uh, you know, some of you might be like freshmen or sophomores in my introduction to econ class. Um, you're thinking, well, this is well above where I'm at right now. And that's fine. Remember, this is something that you should be thinking about for the future. So again, if you're thinking about pursuing economics as a major or a career in economics, then you want to have in the back of your mind that this program exists so that when you do take those econometrics classes or those intermediate micro and macro classes, you can really start like paying attention to the material and thinking, yeah, this is something that I might really need to know for that placement exam so that I can get into this kind of program and really establish myself for a great future in this field, right? So again, you know, don't worry about if you haven't had these classes yet. In fact, if you haven't had these classes yet, then that just gives you a, a greater opportunity to really focus on those classes. And make sure you understand this material so that you can get into a program like this. Any other uh, questions from anybody? If there uh, aren't any more questions, Precious, did you want to talk just a little bit about the kind of uh, people that you had as colleagues in the program? Like, what were their backgrounds like? I know you kind of mentioned that they come from a, a wide range of academic experience, but uh, maybe just like personally, were there people who were, um, you know, uh, maybe uh, uh, mothers or fathers, or were there people who, again, maybe uh, from outside the country who had just uh, come in, right? What was kind of your experience with that? Yes, so I think this was the most diverse perspective I've ever had of economics in my entire life. Um, even at UCR, I think that UCR is a really unique campus, so you see more people who are diverse around you all of the time, but going into a program that's viewed as prestigious, as rigorous, um, this is the most diverse I've ever seen. There were students who were immigrants, students who were on their laptops, from Puerto Rico, students who my partner, my research partner was actually, he actually moved here from Egypt when he was 16. So he was just telling me, I'm so incompetent with writing for research. I'm good with the numbers, but I hate writing in English because I always get critiqued. So we were helping each other in that way. Um, there were other students who, there was one student who was a mother 
Um, there were some students who were using their past experience, somebody who faced houselessness, homelessness, who integrated that into their research. So this was really the first time I saw so many people come together from very diverse backgrounds and not only show that they can do this, but succeed massively. So, so many of these people went on to, um, they're right now applying for RA ships. So this program not only prepares you to potentially apply for a PhD, but there are these relationships with, like Dr. Corey was saying earlier, the Federal Reserve. So if you don't want to go into academia, like I don't really want to teach economics. There's so much that you can do with this degree, as I'm sure you heard before you actually chose to major in economics. So this program really prepares you for that and it gives you a group of people who are like you. There was another person, I'm a DJ at the campus radio station, and there was another um, student who's also a DJ. So we would be sharing music and sharing study playlists and studying on Zoom together all the time. So you're really gonna meet people who you can mesh with beautifully. And I hope that this program is in person, but even if it's not, I really bonded with a lot of people because they're putting in the effort to do so. And I think that's what's really unique about this program. They're encouraging you to work together, giving you the resources to do that, a bunch of students actually came together and said, let's all buy iPads with our stipends when they were working together in that way. It was just really funny because I think a lot of the people in the program had never been given like $3,000 all at once. So it was a really big transition for a lot of people. So much learning, so much growing together. Sometimes we would have like Zoom potlucks, all different types of way of bonding and working together. But there definitely was a lot of diversity. People from all around the world, all across the country, so many different schools. And you're really seeing that UCR does prepare you to succeed beyond this university. Um, sometimes I spoke on this a little bit earlier, there's some names I don't like that I think are rooted in, from a very bad place. But some people will say, you see Ratchet Side, you see whatever. And um, I think that this program proved that where you were from, with that tenacity, with that encouragement from people like Dr. Corey, um, you can go so, so far. So. Yeah, I think that the diversity of the cohort was probably one of the most special aspects of the program. And I can't wait for all of you to potentially experience that as well. Yeah, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go on record easily as saying that having taught at West Virginia University and Florida State University and now at UC Riverside, you know, I'll put UC Riverside students up against any other students in the country, not only in terms of their intellig intelligence and ability to succeed in the classroom, but their work ethic and perseverance. So yeah, I mean, don't feel like you don't belong in this program just because you're at UC Riverside and not at a place like Yale or Harvard or any place like that. But um, again, uh, you know, I'll, again, I'll put UC Riverside students up against any other students across the nation. Cool. All right, any final questions? Well, if not, uh, thank you, Precious, for sharing your experience. I really appreciate you uh, coming in on the Zoom call. Uh, again, this is being recorded, and um, I'm going to uh, send the file to the chair of the university so that they can put it on the, uh, uh, or sorry, the chair of our department, so they can put it on the uh, department's website if they like, and I'll also make it available on my course sites for anybody who's in uh, my classes. All right, but again, thank you, Precious. We really appreciate it, and uh, thank you all for coming. And again, I hope you at least uh, uh, think about uh, doing this program in the future. If you're not quite there yet, again, it's something to always keep in the back of your mind. But thank you for your attention, and I'll stick around if anybody has any final questions. I'm going to stop the recording and just let me know if you need anything.